what I'm hearing now from all ages is this fear of, I'm not sure I'm safe here in America. I never thought I would see 1930s, 1939 repeated in my lifetime. We saw for a long time the trajectory of anti-Semitism increasing year over year, increasing 100% from one year to the next. And in the last five years, the highest years on record. Anti-Semitism has this really strange effect in that when it increases, it strengthens the Jewish world. And when it dissipates, it weakens us. And that's a strange paradox for us. The sense of comfort and security that we had, both as Jews in America and as it relates to the state of Israel, has been shattered in a very significant way. But we look at Harvard and the polling from December, we can see that a majority of those under 24 and almost half of those under 34 agreed that Jews are a class of oppressors that should be treated as oppressors, and that that isn't a false ideology. The Jewish community on campuses across the United States has never faced this since World War II, certainly. Law enforcement described the encampment as one of the largest encampments of content and material since the Vietnam War that they had to remove. We know the primary groups driving the protests I think it's no secret to say that it's Students for Justice in Palestine. That is the primary pro-Palestinian group that's on campus that's been engaging in these encampments. The graffiti was rampant that had very anti-Semitic language on it. We saw swastikas, very clear indications of anti-Semitism beyond criticism of the politics, beyond criticism of the government, beyond criticism of even military actions, but very specifically directing and targeting of the Jewish community. Look at the anti-discrimination policies of academic associations and universities, because often they contain things that you're not allowed to discriminate on the basis of color, religion, or nationality. Therefore, boycotting an Israeli student or a Jewish professor may actually be against the law. You simply cannot discriminate against a person because they associate themselves with a real or perceived connection to the state of Israel. And what we're seeing on campuses across, honestly, the entire country is something that gives rise to a potential Title VI claim. Title VI is the part of the 1964 Civil Rights Act that prohibits discrimination in institutions that receive federal funding on the basis of race or national origin. When we see all Jews held accountable for what happens in Israel, that is anti-Semitism. And so this is a pattern that we've seen play out, whether or not it was the war in Gaza previously, whether or not it's any type of Middle East turmoil, we've tracked it for years. What happens abroad actually manifests here in the US. And we see that as synagogues are targeted or all Jews are held responsible for various issues. I've been interviewing many Jewish authors who suddenly face bigotry that they hadn't felt before. Even Jews who are not Israeli, don't write about the Middle East, are having doors slammed in their faces. And word in the industry is that they just don't want to hear from Jews right now. Just calling Jews white has never existed in the history of the world except in post-war America. Jews were not identified as white people in the 19th century in the United States or even during World War I. They were considered a separate group of people, a minoritized and often discriminated group. American politics are a god-awful mess, and this is only going to make it more complicated because the American Jewish community finds itself politically homeless. It's no longer on the side of the left, can't be on the side of the right. We don't know where we are.